Hi, Danielle. Hi, Case. How are you? I'm okay, you know, surviving and thriving. Mm. And, mm. you know, and also super depressed. I don't know what I, yeah. I am. I have really high highs and really low lows. Um, just to be honest with our people, I've had some dark times uh, as of recent. Um, and, you know, just up in the middle of the night, kind of like worrying about the world and, and, and hoping everything yep. is okay. How, yeah. how are you? <laughs> I mean, the same. I'm I'm also have started entering into a period of just slight depression. You know, in California, the cases and just in terms of COVID are like spiking and I'm starting to feel like, am I ever going to see my family on the East Coast again? And yeah, that's me too. I all of those realities that. starting to sink in and like, is my son going to start kindergarten? <sighs> just, you know, those yeah. types of things. But luckily my father, Danielle, has decided in this time when, you know, my son can't go to school or, or summer to, to teach him and sent him, I think I mentioned this first part, a real toolbox with a real hammer and real humongous nails and has been teaching him on Zoom how to hammer. He's just turned five and then sent him a real saw. No. <laughs> a giant real saw. He's like, I can teach him over Zoom. I'm like, what? He goes, he's got to learn. I'm like, got to learn for what? He's five. Oh Did I already mention this? No, you have not mentioned this at all, Casey. Honestly, I don't know what to do because my dad's that like walk it off dad. And I feel like if I say no, he's going to be like, you baby him. Like, I don't want him to saw, you know? I don't want that. So, God, if anyone, if anyone's on Twitter, please just like message my dad and say five year olds are too young to saw. If you feel that way, because I feel like my dad will respond well from listeners. But if I say it, it's like, uh, I think your kid can saw. <laughs> I don't think I can saw. He also sent planks of wood for him to saw. Well, that's generous. Like, if you're going to do it, you might as well. Right. It's like, well, what are you saw? <laughs> yeah, you know? it's like you're going to send go a out. pack you... of crayons. Where's the paper? You got to go off to Lowe's. Like, nobody, no, no. no. But to see a full saw come in the mail, like a metal, my, my sister-in-law couldn't wrap her head around. She's like, right, like a Melissa and Doug Wood saw. I'm like, no. She's like, right, but like another kind of kid ran like a small saw. No. A saw. You know, in the same vein, my dad sent my daughter something a little more age appropriate, which was a magic kit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that feels... That feels right. That feels right. That feels like, you know... I'd like to disappear the saw. <laughs> Great joke. I mean, you can have it break i've had that in my life my dad how do you break a saw it's a metal my dad said, i break the saw yeah you just say it broke my dad sent my daughter this i want to say it's like an olden times toy that he used to love like let's say in the 50s or whatever. like it's like a like a wooden toy with a ball that you have to like keep up and out of the holes you know what i'm talking about yeah, like yeah and my father's like it's the best toy I swear to fucking God, every time we get on the phone, he's like, so how's she liking it? He sent it a year ago, a year ago. Mm. Every time I finally have it to all of them. And I said it broke. It broke? It broke. It broke. Because no kid wants this. It's a frustration. And I think you can just say yeah. it broke. My husband is getting like frustrated with me because I'm starting, you know, I've only, only dove I Divin? wanted to say dive Divin? in, <laughs> dive in. <laughs> further into like LA nonsense. You know how spiritual I've gotten and yes. I'm into tarot cards and I've rusted out the crystals and now yeah. I'm into intuitive training and I'm reading a book called Practical Intuition and Practicing Intuition and trying to become a medium. Anyway, <laughs> Danielle, and I'm happy to give anyone a reading, but I started doing tarot cards with my five-year-old. We're all no. doing things inappropriate with him. The dark arts. What? It's kind of calming. Like we'll be lying in bed and they're like sweet cards. They're not. And then I was like, I'm going to make tarot cards for kids. There's like 90 million brands of that. But I just like ask a question you want to ask. The questions are normally like, will I get to see cars three tomorrow? They're not the, <laughs> the deep questions that you want to get at. But sometimes we'll turn the card over and it does always seem to apply and he likes it. I don't know that's what's like, happening. You know, that's cute. I should try yeah. it with Sydney. She'd probably like it. I never am quite age appropriate. I told you I told my 10-year-old niece about the Black Dahlia murder. Right. I, yeah. Well, I have been taught. I taught. I told you I told Sydney about sex the other day. She asked me. And I explained it to her. Yeah. Got to. And I just, you know, she'd already seen my vagina and said it was fat. <laughs> it was only... <laughs> Like, well, this is how it got back. Was that because she couldn't get at it because of the <laughs> foliage? 
But no, but she, I, she was asking me how babies came. From, and I, I sort yeah. of did it very kind of like. It's weird because like, why is it so ba- weird to say it? I don't know. Everyone's always like, oh, I got to have the sex talk. I'm like, does anyone care? I think because it's like. As someone who never had it by their parents. My parents just tossed me a book that said called Peter and Caroline and was like, learn it. <laughs> and that was that and I'll never forget it. I think I'll never even got a book. No, I My got a book. Took me to Outback Steakhouse and said, Do you want to go on birth control? And I was sixteen over what? a blooming onion. <laughs> you were a blooming onion. I <laughs> <laughs> exactly wow i was like oh i've been on birth control for a while <laughs> that is a shot no i was like six and my parents handed me a book and said six, six. and they handed me this book called peter and caroline which i just ended up like masturbating to <laughs> <laughs> okay Ugh. you know i don't like this talk i know you're, you're such a prude sometimes in ways I that i find shocking and I'm okay with that. You know what? There's, I'm okay with that. Okay, Danielle, before we get into the housewives and our fabulous guest, mm-hmm. we have a segment. Yes. And we're actually setting up a very exciting segment that we can all participate in in August. We have a correspondent. Yes. Please. You know, we've had correspondents in the past. Matt McConkie has covered movies for us. You know, June Diane has covered Sister Wives. We've had Jessica Chaffin uh, covered Real Housewives of New Jersey. For a beat, remember we couldn't, we didn't have time to watch it. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know we've had people with special skill sets that we need to drill down on, and this we felt was quite aligned with our listeners, which is a dear friend of ours, Chelsea Devantes, is with us now, and she would like to propose, as would we, a book club, a summer book club, mm-hmm. in which. We all read and look much like a book club. Most of us don't read it. We end up just drinking wine and we never read the book and that's okay. You can still participate. And you can still purchase. (laughs) Mm. I I mean, they're not our books, but we'll just read quotes. But I want Chelsea to, to, you know, we're going to discuss three books end of August and it's just, they're fun beach reads. They're shelter in place reads. They're wherever you are reads. Literature. Fun. Literature very deep works, important works of our time that we would like to kind of invite you to read as a group. We're going to set up closer to, you can just send us topics you'd really like to delve in further on these quotes that popped out. Yeah. On these books. And you can send Mm -hmm. us these and we'll read your your quotes and your thoughts Mm -hmm. and just a fun celebrity book club, if you will. Yes. And this, this notion was started by Chelsea. She has such funny stories on her Instagram about celebrity book clubs where oftentimes she's in a bubble bath discussing them Mm -hmm. and she She really inspired me. me. She has yes. she has inspired me to read some of these books. I'm always like, yes. is it good? She's like, yeah, like she really has. Oh, she knows. She reads them all. Well, let's let Chelsea tell us mm-hmm. what our what our assignments are for the summer. Yes, for please. anyone who wants to take part. Hi. Hi. Hi, you guys. Oh my God. Thank you for doing I'm this. I'm so excited to celebrity book club with you guys. And you've been doing this work by yourself. It's and so we just important. felt the need to glom on and take some credit for it because we didn't like that we weren't involved in something. <laughs> well, well, you know, it's tough doing a book club by yourself because that's not really how clubs work. So I'm just so happy to finally have some members in my club. You have been doing it beautifully in the tub by yourself. <laughs> Thank you. I have, yes, I've been in the bathtub book clubbing. Um, just a spoiler alert, I do wear a swimsuit when I'm in there because I, I don't give my boobs away for free, but maybe for money, but not for free on my Instagram. But someone could absolutely pay you for a price. But if you want, look, if, if it's enough money, we'll see how I feel. Um, right. Okay. So the books I really want to book club with you guys are Jessica Simpson's open book, which is what started this whole thing. And it is, it is a read you are not expecting. It's going to, it's going to knock you off your feet. Take us on a ride. It's going to take you, yeah, it's going to take you on a ride. Um, You know, there's so much in the book that's hard. There's just so much, but it's everything from like having an emotional affair, um, like emotional affair on Nick Lachey, which by the way, I don't really believe in emotional affairs, but she said it was an emotional affair and it's with Johnny Knoxville. We'll get into that later. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. But, um, she's like, Johnny Knoxville is just so smart and artistic. And it's like, Oh no, who were you around that Johnny Knoxville is your emotional affair. Wow. Interesting. Um, John Mayer breaks up with her nine times. Her dad tells her he's divorcing her mom as she gives birth. It's wild. It is. 
Wow. Okay. And she goes into all these topics because I hate when they don't really like go there. Yes. No, she goes there in a way like page one of her book begins with, um, it is 7 a.m. and I'm drunk already. Ah, what an intro. <laughs> Sold. Yeah. Yay. Sold. Yeah. And she's I've not- already <laughs> downloaded it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's not like- drunk at 7 a.m. Uh-huh. Drunk at 7 a.m. I mean, she she spills the tea so with so much detail. It is then shocking that Ashley Simpson is not in the book at all, notably. Um, and I do have some goss that we'll discuss later for why she's not in the book. But like, I mean, she talks about sometimes everything. it's not what we talk about. It's what we don't talk That's about. So right. That's so true. Okay, so that's book number okay. one, and we might do an episode devoted to all three. We might break it up. We're, we're figuring all that out, but these are the books, the must-read, so that you may join us. Again, or don't read them and just get a glass of wine and I join us. It'll be a regular read episode a of the pod. It'll probably tell you all you need to know. Right? Read Very the, true. Read the the inside cover and the, the you know, the descriptions. The descriptions, the pictures. Yes, and also you can go to my Instagram and on my story highlights, when I recapped the books originally, those are still there. Oh, so if you want to be like, is this for me? You can click on through. Cliff notes. Cliff notes, yes. I, a lot Chels of film notes. there's... Chels <laughs> notes. <laughs> Chels notes, yes. And I, I also drink when I do this. So, you know, <laughs> know that. Um, Beautiful. Okay, book number two really for the podcast i've never read it before i'm very excited is nini leak's book oh uh, which uh i will say weirdly was written in 2011 um and it's called never make the same mistake twice which i feel like is also something george bush believes in um so we can come together on that <laughs> um but it was written so long ago and it's like her own description is like going from being like a black sheep to being like a single mom to like escaping abusive marriage to becoming the woman she is now and i do feel she's made the same mistake a few times especially with her <laughs> husband greg who she is yeah but i'm so in i'm so in on this <laughs> we know how i feel about nanithia and this is very exciting i'm ex- i love her and yeah it's never new- make the same mistake twice it's new to me so i will be reading along with you guys and then Perfect. um book number three it also was written a little while ago but it is worth a reread this has been my second time reading it uh it's leah Rimney's book <laughs> i'm so um, excited to read that one that's on my list oh my God, that one! I've is, read it. It's gorgeous. It's everything. It's every. She like the stuff she talks about on Scientology is just. Uh, it's sometimes hard to recap because I'm like, what are you talking about? Like she'll be like, and then the reports on me, and then he's a suppressive person, and then Tom Cruise wanted cookie dough and threw a fit. Like it's great. <laughs> That sounds like me. <laughs> that sounds like an episode um, of Bitch Sesh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, very, yeah, a little tough. I though. am such a huge Leah Remini fan. If I could get her on this podcast, I, nothing would make me happier. She, I'm, I love her. I, I love her? like all of the kind of seasons of her career and how she's pivoted into like this like activist work. She's also like a great comedic actor. She's also just like funny and relatable. I love her. Well, you know what's so crazy too is, so I'm actually finishing the Leah Remini book on my Instagram right now. Tune in, tune in live. But I just yeah. got to the part where after she ends that show with, um, I keep calling it Kevin Can Wait, but it's not Kevin Can Wait. It's the first one, King of Queens. King of Queens. <laughs> <laughs> after King of Queens, she does a reality show. She does the talk and gets fired from it. She does Dancing with the Stars. So, and I say this with no shade. I'm like so happy she found it. But I think Leah Remini, I mean, I know she gave over a million dollars to the cult of Scientology and then had to keep working because she had no money and then was like fuck it i just got to do a scientology show because i got fired from the talk and but it was almost like that was her calling yeah because she's really to expose this yes yes i agree because like you know heavy stuff is happening like danny masterson and his rape charges leah remini is behind that leah remini is looking for the head of the church's wife who's been missing for nine years shelly 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 leah is suing them so she can't talk about it because she's like we're finding the wife but what i love about leah is she's like if anything happens to me, you know who did wow. it. So they can't come after her, That's really. That's so true. That's her whole thing is like, come and get me. We all know who it'll be. And I, you're right. And she just has such balls. They're huge. Yes. I mean, I mean, it's just, mm-hmm. or, you know, a huge vagina. And I love huge <laughs> vagina energy. Yeah. But she, yeah. she is just like, no fear. 
no fear and I, her nails to boot are <laughs> incredible. No, she's doing it all in inch long nails. I love it. She is. And JLo's best friend. I mean, the list goes on. Oh my God. And that's the other crazy thing too. Like she, JLo's in the book, by the way, JLo's yep. memoir. It's, it's it, not that great, but, it, but great. It's so good. We're, we're also going to read JLo's memoir at some point, not part of this, but it's really good. <sighs> Yeah, like I'm also, I'm so fine with ghostwriters. Like oh. I let everything go when I'm in these books. I accept the reality I'm given. Mm, yeah. I, although I will say some of them, you can like really hear the ghostwriter. Like in JLo's book, right. he's like, you know, the journey of this one is that you've you've lost in love, but now you love yourself and you want to be alone. And in the middle of that, she's like, actually, I really want to talk about Casper, my dancer. <laughs> and uh, she keeps trying to talk about Casper and he keeps trying to be like, nope, you're an independent gal. And then she talks about Casper. Oh, so that they're like in conversation with on that one? No, no. It's just, it comes through in the writing. <laughs> okay. It's like very disjoint, disorganized. Go, you can feel the struggle. There's a real war. There's a, war. There's a real war. And he probably only got like a half hour with her. So he had to print every <laughs> He quote. just printed every quote. And then literally the book gets released and it comes out that Casper was cheating on her. So, I mean, it's just a ride. Who in God's good name would cheat on J-Lo? Truly. Yeah. The most stunning woman on earth. Guys, it's not about how we oh. look. It's yes. about how the men feel and the women oh. feel. Whoever, cheating oh. is not about looks. Haven't we figured that out? Sorry. That it's about to... emotional. Now, Chelsea, before we let you go quickly, why don't you believe in emotional affairs? Okay. I, I, this, I believe in this from a great deal of anecdotal evidence where I have had friends, colleagues, acquaintances, all confess to having emotional affairs. And when probed or when time tells, it is revealed that there was like a blowjob in there, like a little bit. Um, you know, you're like just I just, it's not real. Like uh, there's always, there's always touch. It's a physical touch. affair. There, yes. Whenever someone says they had an emotional affair, it's like, mm, you just didn't fuck something. the person. Like mm. you just didn't fuck the person. Yeah. And, and then also I almost think an emotional affair is worse. Not be, yes, the crime is worse, but like, if you ha if you're so in love with someone but you refuse to fuck them, that means you know how bad it is what you're doing. Like, it's just like mm -hmm. I just I don't like them, you guys, and I don't believe in them. Interesting. Enough. Like if I have an affair, it, it tits first, like heart <laughs> second. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow. It's almost like that's that I can understand. We all have needs. Yeah. We're all human. We're right. animals, You're right. really. Okay. And we need And do you not believe in sex addicts as well? Uh no, I'm sure I do. I'm sure I believe in sex addicts. Okay. I feels it almost feels wrong to not. Um I believe, yeah, no, sex addicts. Absolutely. Are you an anti-vaxxer? <laughs> <laughs> Here's kidding. what's so funny. I'm Imagine kidding. anti vaxxers now where they're like, we're going to create a Corona vaccine and your ass can't take it now. <laughs> it's the best. Never seen a better comeuppance. Yep. Oh, Thank you, God. Chelsea. Thank you for and having me. And I put anti-vaxxers and Scientologists in the same boat. Anyway, <laughs> Chelsea, you're a dream. Um, Third week of August, our podcast, of course, we'll do some some brief recaps, but we really are going to delve into these yeah. important works with Chelsea leading the way. And we'll remind you again, Jess Simpson's book, Nanithia Leek's book, Leah Remini's book. Get on them. Get on them. Thank em. you so much for having me. I can't wait to book club with you guys in bathtubs since we can't go to the beach. And tell us where we can find you on Instagram. Oh, yeah. I'm at Chelsea Devantes, C-H-E-L-S-E-A-D-E-V-A-N-T-E-Z. Um, and... I'll be there waiting for you. And all the book clubs are in my highlights. And you can always DM me hot goss because I will post it. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like yes. our podcast. Oh, yeah. No need oh, yes. to, love no need to check sources. No. no, of course not. <laughs> yeah. Who has time for that? Chelsea, you're Thank the best. You. Thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break and come back with our recaps and our guests. Danielle, we're back with a, a favorite guest, both of ours and our listeners. She's beloved in my life mm. and beloved in my pod. <laughs> yep, that's right. And she knows she's a star of, of TV and screen, and there's no other way to put it. You know, she, of course, was on Ugly Betty, that we know. And what's she on now? She's on a new show called Love, Victor, um, a hilarious new show where she plays the mom of the aforementioned Victor. Wow. Um, the titular what? Victor. The titular Victor. Yeah. 
I uh, love it. Emphasis on the tits. Am I right, tits, guys? Please welcome <laughs> JK, guys. JK. But she does have an amazing body. That and I, a gorgeous rack. A yeah, gorgeous rack. But I'm weirdly into over Zoom. Please welcome the lovely, smart, funny, wonderful Ana Ortiz. What's up? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Ana, what's doing with you during this this troubled time? Um, well, you know, I think like everyone else is taking it day by day. I'm trying, I think my kids though, at this point are like, I mean, honestly, they're just turning into Nell. It's like, I'm just don't want <laughs> to live like that. I won't. Tay in the wind. <laughs> I, I just like, if, <laughs> they are really becoming completely mm. feral. Completely, yeah. Feral, yeah. feral, better word. Yes. So, um, other than that, we're doing well. I guess. I'm cooking a lot. That's great. Which I never did before, really. And do you like it? Um, sometimes. But usually, you know, it's just, again, with the kids, it's like a lot of bitching. It's just all they want is like butter and noodles. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm like, I'm making shrimp scampi. And just between us and our many listeners, how's it going with your, your hot husband? <laughs> He's super hot, just right? between He's us. He's a very hot Jewish gentleman. <laughs> oh, oh, you know how I am with a Jewish gentleman. I've never laid I my mean, eyes upon him, but I'm titillated. I do have a type. You do. Um, he's, he's great. Actually, you know what? I have to say, this is gonna, a little bit of sentimentality in the time of whatever, but uh, you know, my kids are at that age where they still like me, but they're also, and, and want to hang out with me, but they're also old enough to do their own thing. It's kind of like a really perfect sweet spot. So it's been kind of nice just to hang out with them. And like, literally, I think my daughter grows overnight sometimes. And I just to see all these changes, like, so in my face, um, I'm just trying to look at the positive side of things, guys. No, we have to. But, uh, but it's, it's been, it's been okay. And my husband's still hot and, um. Well, good for oh. him. Keeping it right and tight during these times. Oh, you better listen. Listen. I got, you know, I got needs. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've never seen your husband, but I'll be doing a deep dive right after. Oh, this. he is a gorgeous gentleman. Okay. Gorgeous. Okay, I love it. And you've been playing tennis, you told us. Yes. What a great socially I, distanced exercise. Well, see, isn't that nice? And luckily we, we have a place where we can go. <clears throat> tell everybody, can you tell everybody where you're playing tennis? <laughs> I'm playing tennis at Judith Light's house. <laughs> You're a hero, as is she. I mean, what a way to walk into the world to be like, I will be doing my tennis with not the boss, but well, who's the boss, really? No one knew in that situation, yeah. Judith or Tony. Or Catherine but, Hellman. Or Catherine Hellman or Danny Pintaro. <laughs> well, let me just put it all to rest right here and right now. Judith Light is indeed the boss. Oh, yes, she is. Right. I love her. I'm obsessed. Uh -huh. You know, you playing tennis at Judith Light's is, I don't know why people say, you know, in LA, we're in our little bubble, you know. <laughs> I don't know why they say that. This is thrilling news, Anna. It, it's thrilling news. Um, well, it's very good socially distancing exercise. Yeah. And you're, you know, in the sun and it's great. Yeah. You look great. Not that that's what matters, but again, we have to look at the positive. <laughs> we have to find the, the uh, highs. Before we start, can you fill us in? Just because, you know, our housewife's content is dwindling at a rate that's uncomfortable. Uh, when I mm -hmm. asked you to do the show, you were like, what are we going to do? Oh, we're so upset. <laughs> yeah, I'm what, what else are, are you watching? Oh God, that's a good question. Well, uh, 90 Day Fiance is still is still right, it's still there for Sweet me. Still, are you still, watching the Happily Ever After 90 Day Fiance? Yes. Good. Yes, indeed, I am. Yeah. Good. Uh, and I and I, With you know, Larissa it just. Co. <laughs> <laughs> It never fails to satisfy, so that does it. That that satis that that fills a little bit of the hole for me. Um, what else am I watching? Uh, I don't know, y'all. Like it's hard because I'm trying to like keep the kids off the iPad, so we'll like do movie night and watch something together, and it's it's like so we go back into the archive of like what I liked growing up, and it doesn't hold up a lot of time. <laughs> a lot of it's incredibly problematic. Oh yeah. 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 Especially John Hughes movies. You're like, yikes. 100%. Oh. Yeah. 
You know what um, I started watching that I'm obsessed with? There's only been one episode on HBO is I'll Be Gone in the Dark. <gasps> oh, I watch that. Guys. It's a documentary about the Golden State Killer and um, this woman, Michelle McNamara, who passed away, Patton Oswalt's wife, was just obsessed with trying to solve this case and just a true, like, fighter for the victims. And it is just about her journey trying to trying to find the Golden State Killer. It is wild. And he just got convicted. I listened to the podcast of it, and I was literally afraid to, like, sleep with my windows open that night. Like, I literally... You know, most of these, like, I'm not a big murdery, like, podcast person, but every once in a while, there's, I like a good mystery. I like a good whodunit, things like that. And usually it's like, this could never happen because it happened, you know, it, you know. In the olden days. Ago. Yeah, like, like, it's the Black Dahlia or something. You know what I mean? Like, with, like, an yeah. old mystery that today we could have used forensics or something. But, to, <laughs> but that one was like, oh, we're all, it, he's going to come get me. <laughs> like he's out there and he's gonna get that's why I like he's snapped gonna he's gonna get you good that's why I like snapped because it's women snapping and I'm like they're snapping at their husbands they're not coming for me they're so fucking pissed at that one man <laughs> that I feel really safe with them and I applaud them there's also a murder podcast if we're all again these are incredibly dark and, I need a good podcast but it's called like the thing about Pam has anyone listened to that one what is no. the thing about Pam <laughs> uh, it's like one of those dateline ones so it's that guy who has that crazy voice I forget his name who like talks yeah. like this and it's called the thing about Pam and just you know a female killer is the best kind of killer in, I my, agree. Yeah. in my like with all things being you know no, like, it's like that just, Charlie you know, movie monster i was like you're the most likable oh. heroine we've ever seen yes it was like a romantic comedy oh i loved it i was you know it's weird to be on the side of a serial killer and yet, and yet. <laughs> i was totally on her side oh, is, yeah. i loved the yeah. montages and everything in that one. Oh yes in a roller skating rink please <laughs> uh, talk, about a, talk about a meet cute exactly <laughs> oh well i also was watching this really weird survival show called alone about people who go and live in the Antarctic and they have to survive. Wow. That feels like, really good. It feels like something feels we like should like do. <laughs> Is it, it probably <laughs> seems better than here, I almost Isn't feel. Isn't it kind of what we're doing? Like, <laughs> So, Anna, we don't have a new Beverly Hills, but I'm just curious your thoughts. On Beverly yeah, Hills? Yeah, where you're at with it all. Okay, well, I know this might be controversial, but I'm here for Sutton. I really am. Really? I, why? I just, well, first of all, she reminds me of someone I know. <laughs> I think I know who it is. I'm in shock. I'm positive I know who it is. Is it Judith Light? <laughs> and, and I just, I don't know. I like her weird, like, like Humpty Dumpty body, that like really round top with them skinny little legs. And this always in like a, you know, like a $50,000 outfit with that bizarre style that she has and you know she comes off like she's super mean and then all of a sudden she's like crying because what's her name Dorit hurt her feelings and I was like that Dorit didn't even Dorit didn't even say hardly anything I don't know I don't know there's something about her that I like and I like that Lisa Rinna is always like she's rich <laughs> <laughs> uh. and I want to go to one of her like parties and get one of those fucking swag bags I mean this Come is on. controversial. See, she comes off to me as the type of woman that that swag bag is for show and for the show, literally. But she comes off as very cheap to me. As rich as she is, and like her $50,000 dress is hiding a cheapness. <laughs> Just gonna put that but out aren't there. the richest people the most cheap? That's how they stay rich. That's why we're always broke. Right, it's, that's I, right. <laughs> I'm telling you, I figured that shit out. Rich people are rich because they are cheap and they hold everything really tight. But uh, I don't know. I like I like that little Southern Sutton. She's fucking wackadoo, and I'm here for that it. That Humpty Dumpty body. <laughs> that is so tough and inaccurate. You know. Um, <laughs> Wow. Okay, so you're a fan of Sutton. Where are you with the Denise of it all this season? Um, I'm living for Denise and I can't wait till it starts going. I want, I want the whole brandy thing to start coming out. I'm ready. I'm ready for Denise to start really getting trashy with it. Cause I think it's going to happen. 
Have we waited I, long enough? Like it's like I feel like we have. I feel like we really have, but you know, they keep teasing it. Like, I, you know, when she sat down, she's like, I'm Denise Richards. And I just rewatched Wild Things. Let me tell you, she was a hot fucking ticket. Yeah. I forgot. Is that what you were showing your kids? <laughs> we watched it together. I just wanted them, like Lisa Rinna said, I mean, they and should does know. Does it hold up? Does it hold up? <laughs> Is it problematic? <laughs> they should, you know, if they're going to have a threesome, they should know how to do it right. They should know I'm, from you. I'm only following Lisa Rinna's logic. Um, so, you know, it's the Bible according to Rinna. By the way, have you seen Lisa Rinna's sunglass ad where she's nude? No. What? A- by ad, you mean TV? No, it's a print ad. Google it. I don't know what she's doing to look that way with that body. With I just I, I think she's not eating. She can't be eating. She just doesn't eat. It's a shame. Right? I don't have a it. Okay, I'm seeing it. it. Wow. I can't. Wow. I just don't know how that's possible. I do like seeing a little moisture in her hair with it like slicked down a little, like not so <laughs> puffy. <laughs> you know, I think her hair is perfect and I don't need to change anything about her hair. I think it's well, nice. It's not, it hasn't changed in 25 but years. I, I know like when she does that like little straight bob when she I comes don't. on and throws that wig on. <laughs> I don't. I like it when she's just like that shagged, shagadelic or whatever, like whatever <laughs> thing that's like poof of hair. Um, that's what I, that's okay. I like my Lisa. My favorite thing that Lisa has done this season, and it's in an episode coming up, but it makes me so happy, is when Denise goes, watch it, watch it. And Denise goes, and Lisa goes, ooh, you're so angry. Oh, I'm so angry. <laughs> and it's the scent of chill. I want to say that when someone's coming at me. It, it like it's agitate. fighting words. So yeah. It is fighting words. Those are fighting words when you're kind of like, excited and someone's like smiling and eating it like cake like yes. they're happy to see you there that to me is like i want to rip your face off and it's shove like, it up your asshole like, yeah it's like when someone tells you to relax when you're getting hyped no it's thank not you okay. I, well lisa's okay. lisa's i don't know man at least so i mean listen i love i'm here for lisa don't get me wrong but she's so shady fucking two-faced like it's so she just turned like she turned on Sutton in a quick with a quickness it didn't take I wouldn't be Lisa Rinna's friend boy I wouldn't get too close to her now what do you think of Kyle and Kyle's bangs as two two, two separate entities (laughs) bang gate (laughs) Um, uh, I hate the bangs but I also know that she just likes she just has the bangs and she keeps blaming it on this dang movie that she's shooting like they had to i just had to cut bangs for this movie i had to cut bangs for this movie. like no you didn't girl you just you know the botox was wearing off and you cut bangs i mean we all are tempted i get it <laughs> i mean i have them on let's just remember i know i will guess what every i don't know month or so i have to email my girlfriend and be like i'm gonna cut bangs just so she'll be like don't cut your bangs but i got mine I after i got a literally 15 dollar pair of like clip-on bangs i just to see what it was like like kyle could have done that for the movie you look fantastic thank anyway. you but you i'm saying so- kyle did not have to do that like you're saying like they that's not a price of a wig it's just a clip-in no she likes the bang. i don't i i you know and kyle has good hair she you have case you have like the hair of the god bless you but and it's like that thick hair you guys can have bangs not me. i don't know i can't no I can't either. I have a cowlick right here. Oh, I have seven cowlicks, like all throughout my hair. And I once said to a hairdresser, like, okay, bangs. And she's like, I'm sorry to tell you this. (laughs) That's not going to be a possibility. (laughs) She's like, I need to stand behind my work and I cannot. She's like, I can't put you out in the streets like that. (laughs) I can't stand by that work. I know. I'm a Casey. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get those. I've been meaning to forever get those clip-on bangs. That's what I. Because I, I do like a, a bang look yeah. now and again. Yeah. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? These are but the times. Long. These are the times to experiment, guys. <laughs> it is. It's true. I want to say I, something about Denise. Is it possible that this? It was never filmed. None of this we have on camera. The story came out. All we have is Denise saying, like, you better watch it. And then we cut off, we cut filming off, and we're on a road to nowhere. Don't no. say it. I, I cannot believe that. Okay. I okay. cannot. I refuse to. I'm living for so little during this quarantine. Okay. And I'm it, sorry. Honestly, 
I can't bear it. I can't bear I, the thought of it. It's one of the things keeping me going, keeping me striving. We can't take any more hits. And I can't take that. No more hits. No more hits. <laughs> no. No. Look, the curve needs to trend down. <laughs> I swear to God. And this, uh, this, I need Denise to trend down. <laughs> I need to yep. 100%. I'm, I'm ready for Brandy to come through with all her drama. I mean, come on. With all of it. Okay. So should we move on to New York? Yes. The I, only thing we have at this I have juncture. a question right off the bat for Anna that, that goes off the fact that you like that you like Sutton. Does that, does it, is this a one-to-one? -one? Do you also like Elise? Oh, Elise. Elise doesn't even sort of register, does she? No, 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 no. Uh, Elise has none of the sort of bang and, and sort of um, crazy that Sutton brings. Okay. Sutton brings a real element of crazy that I enjoy. I, and I, I feel like I know it. Mm. I'm very close to it. And so, uh, not me personally. Yeah, you've like, seen it. <laughs> You've seen it. I have, yeah. And, 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 uh, no, Elise, no, Elise just kind of like, for instance, with her going up to Ramona at the table and all of a sudden she's all like, are you okay? Are you okay? No, she's so hungry to be, uh, she's so thirsty to be on this show and she can't even bring any real drama. Like girl, like get up, throw a glass, dance on the table, do something. Do something. But you just running around you know, saying things about Ramona and then going right back to her and being like, I'm the, are you okay? You know, no, no, no. And her style doesn't bring it. Like she doesn't even have that crazy Sutton nutso thing or the, or Dorit with her hairstyles or like, what are you bringing? You're bringing me lame wannabe Kyle hair, mm. lame wannabe Kyle bangs. Mm. And like every once in a while, a bright, shiny black shirt. <laughs> wow so beautifully poignantly put. yeah that was poetry that felt like a sonnet <laughs> and that was beautiful this episode Ramona is an emotionally abusive friend oh mm -hmm. for sure and I do think that's why Elise is so terrified of her like yeah. the way she was sitting there with that high collar like Queen Elizabeth just looking down on Hated her it. subjects Oof. I will say she's a monster but I've never even on her scary Ramona Throne, she's never looked more beautiful. She does look great. Oh, and that's such look. a hard dichotomy to sit with. I know. Look, I'm not proud of it, but she, evil looks good on her. And yeah. that's not a... That's, that's not, not something everyone I, can pull off. No, I certainly can't. <laughs> Speaking of monsters. Nice. Speaking of monsters. <laughs> how many fucking times are we going to film in this goddamn Halloween store? Oh. I wrote what? that down. I was like, how many times? Like, I thought I, I was on the wrong episode. <laughs> <laughs> is it like the only location available? I was like, has COVID started and, and this is the only place that is sanitized? <laughs> so we've been there on many trips. We've taken three trips. We've tried on multiple hats and instruments of bludgeoning. Like we, and, and like played around in the sexy feather. Like I can't, I can't. I, I have to stop. Danielle, are you showing us like a crotch shot? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty I've never provocative. seen anything like that. Danielle's yeah. in the Zoom, like the way you would at a gynecologist with her feet up like stirrups and just her crotch down the barrel. <laughs> I've never seen a Zoom shot. <laughs> I'm here for it. What's happening? <laughs> Some new content. <laughs> it literally, we are getting the view your OBGYN <laughs> would get. See, now, if we are, do that, we might have a we might have a show at least. That's right. Come up, come from your gynecologist. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, she Wait. should bring us there. I want to see some vaginal tightening from Elise. Yeah. Green. A lot more. Real quick, I was trying to get away from the sound of the lawnmower, so I brought the computer into a different area. On and the you brought the computer you. into your vagina and brought it yeah. to us. I felt like my vagina was a good enough echo chamber where you couldn't hear a lawnmower. <laughs> 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 oh my god oh my god now to this episode we were treated to something we've never seen before which is testimonials from home oh, guys oh. it was a thrill we got to see angles looks yeah. 
sound. I really enjoyed it because I, I froze it a lot just to see, just to get my bearings, you know, just to kind of like see where I was to look around the rooms to see because Atlanta and their Zoom monials, their Zoom reunion or whatever, yeah. they all had it set up. It looked amazing. They looked great. They had the rooms like decorating. Like, this felt haphazard and crazy. <laughs> like, this yeah. felt like we're seeing Ramona's refrigerator. <laughs> why the fuck is Ramona in front of a microwave? It looked terrible. I mean, why didn't she know better than that? And how about Luann's like self portrait of her? I, like, I had to freeze that. It's like her and her youngest, probably her best days like the the where she was, she was like in God she's or like whatever. never forget she has on like a torn pair of jeans she's like laid out like a centerfold and it and like she her hair is like long and tousled in that picture and it is front and center like she is oh, yeah. behind she's that shot high. yeah 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 i'm here for that though sonia's in the desert and like in a light that to me she she looks way too made up in that desert Hi. light sonia what the hell? I'm worried. I'm a little worried. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little bit worried about our Sonia. Yeah. Because, yo, I mean, I know. I, so you know what is crazy, though? I was watching her at that drunk dinner, and I was thinking, oh, that's what I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm, y'all, I got to, I've been... <laughs> I think I might be like that sometimes. And it was a real, it was a real awakening for me. So that's what the housewives have always done is they put a mirror up and they're always one step, hopefully further than us, but they definitely allow you, you, something's triggered. Listen, man, I just, it was, it was, it was a little bit of a scary moment for me, but damn, I mean, she might need an intervention soon. And do you see yourself in Leah? <gasps> oh, I wish I had Leah's hair. Oh, her hair gives her so many points. Like, I don't even know if I like Leah, but her hair, I'm so, like, Can I tell you, when they, were, when they were doing her hair, I kept looking to see if there was a weave. I was like, there's got to be a weave. There's got to be a weave. I was looking any, it's not a weave. That's all her hair. It's a soft, beachy bend and curl. Oh, gorgeous. My hair. Now, I just fell asleep. You know what? It. Here's the thing about Leah. I'm actually, I really enjoy Leah, but you, I, I grew up in New York. I grew up in the city. I know so many girls like Leah and I can't believe she made it onto the New York housewives. And I feel like, you know, maybe there's like, there's room for, for, for some of us who weren't, you know, not the rich Sonia's and the, you and the business nice. of that. But I'm, I, I, I don't know. There's something I like about Leah. There, <laughs> There is. I know. I feel like. Uh, I feel like. Um, there's. Yeah. I, I. I relate to her sometimes. This is bad. Like all these drunken maniacs. I, I and love I'm, Leah. Like, Leah's my favorite housewife. Almost. You know, next I to really, my legends. <laughs> yeah. Leah did something that we've never seen before. I feel like it really kind of ushered in a new type of house life. Like exactly what you're saying, which is that in Leah's testimonial, she was wearing a sweatshirt. I was like, right? oh, wow, you that. are not playing by these rules. The only no. time we've ever seen a sweatshirt on a housewife is when they're going in for plastic surgery and they're like all out or like when they're coming out of their plastic surgery and we just right. say, my like, ah, But it's like rah. a bright colored, juicy, zip up, yes. tight, boobs yeah. up. Her li And her little tiny apartment, you know, that Luann couldn't bear. And like, I don't know. I just, I, I feel like Leah, Leah's representing for like, the real New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, now, I, I want to say uh, Ramona and the matchmaker. Mm. <sighs> the matchmaker looked so stymied. She was like, what do you want, money or love? And Ramona's like, ideally both. The look on the matchmaker's face was like, I can't do that. Like, I'm not <laughs> a magician. First of all, I didn't even know that that was a thing. Like, I mean, I know there was like a reality show and there are people who fancy themselves matchmaker, but is this like her job? Yes. Is this yes. big? This is I think thing. they pay like a concierge, like a big fee. And like, she's on the payroll kind of like a publicist or something. Again, so relatable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, she's on the payroll. And then when she just sends her guys. So that's why Ramona has like three dates a night because yes. of this matchmaker. Yes. Yeah. I was wondering also, yeah, how Ramona's getting all these dates all the time. I think Ramona is also one of those peoples that 
those peoples one of those people mm-hmm. sorry i don't know what's happening it's, it's coming Plus up, you've lowered your vagina i know i ha- took my vagina out of the shop She's also, i just want everyone to know wearing a bathing suit it's just a strange <laughs> all thing. hell is broken loose guys i don't know where i am what i am <laughs> in a bathing suit i've never seen so much legs in a frame <laughs> still but all your legs are in the frame <laughs> i've never seen these angles <laughs> I like the housewives. I'm out of control when I'm in control of my angles. Like I can't be in control. Of it. I left to my own devices. It's not a pretty picture. And this right. is where we're at. Um, what was I saying? Maybe oh, about the ma- Ramona. Ramona is one of those women or people, I should say, that will go up at a bar and talk and like see something she likes and go for it. You know what I mean? I, I could never deign to think uh-huh. that anyone would find me like to go up to a bar and just be like, Hey guy, what are you like the way that they move in social situations where they scan a bar, it, they're like the terminator. You know, they just scan the bar, like size everyone up, go in attack. You know what I mean? It's, she'll walk around a whole bar and scope all, all the dudes and find out which one she wants to rap to. I've never in my life. And so I she's think she's got that's confidence a- for days, days, bananas. And I so like I how think- she said to the matchmaker who's there to find Ramona a match. She's like, just so you know, I don't need this. I am happy. <laughs> I don't need this. That's like me when I go see like a psychiatrist or a therapist. I'm like, it's like I accidentally got there. I'm like, just so you know, I'm great. I don't need you. And then it's like the breakdown starts. Yeah. Well, it's like almost like she was prescribed it or like, like you know, like one of those 80s movies where like, you have to date a hundred people if you want this money. <laughs> like, And so she's like, I don't need this, but this is what I got to do. Cause I was arrested and they said I had to date a hundred people. <laughs> if I wanted to get out of jail like that's how she's treating it and it's like no Ramona you, you I can't I can't imagine the man or woman who would put oh, up with Ramona I had a question you guys are seeing what? another angle of leg right I, I've never <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not even pointing out anymore <laughs> what what was the deal when they were at that dinner you know and 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 uh homegirl what's her name Oh my God, I'm having a brain fart. Tinsley, Elise? No. Oh, like, Missy? No, the. the, the Jill Dorinda, Dorinda, geez, Louise. Oh, okay. Dorinda was saying to, to Ramona, Oh, I brought Michael. Aren't you happy to see Michael? And, and, um, oh my Ramona God. was just looking straight uh, ahead. And didn't even look. What happened with Michael and, um, Ramona? Did they sleep together I, and he did or something? We never got the real scoop on it but i think he was remember he was at that other party earlier this season and we got the vibe that they had fucked at some point got it and then and then obviously it didn't end well or or he i don't it was weird and i was just like wait nobody's elaborating on what the drama is here but ramona's like she wouldn't wouldn't even look so can you imagine sitting next to someone and pretending that they don't exist like, you're so, like to just ignore and go somewhere else in your body and in your head like she just she timed out she powered down and she was just, like, well was michael the gym maybe i just wasn't following it was he the gentleman that ramona thought whose costume was a gut but really no, that was no. No. Oh, unfortunately that was, it was his real stomach that and she's was. like nice padding and he said that's my stomach that, that was, was horrible horrible I horrible to, the I look like, on his face i felt so bad for him i know and he tried to handle it he was like nope it's all me it was like oh cringe cringe <laughs> Chris. He tried to handle it because not only is it like the worst moment of your life, it's on television. <laughs> Awful. So how dare disgusting. they put that in? How I dare know they put they? in a lot, but how dare they put that in? That felt like, come on, guys, that's not that's not fair. Oh, oh. I showed up at this party. He seemed so sweet. Lovely. I mean, they panned was- right up to his face to see his humiliation. He was just like Gaston coming into a party. <laughs> He was assaulted like two seconds into the party. She's like, oh, I like that padding. He's like, that's my gut. And she's like, how did I know that was his gut? I was like, I cannot. Why do we watch this? <laughs> Why do we watch these shows? These nightmares. <laughs> I know. I love them so much. Um, what about the new taglines? Did anyone see the new mid-season oh, taglines? Have we seen that before? Season? Yeah. 
First of all, like a mint in my mouth. I'm I, what the hell? <laughs> okay, Ramona's was amazing. She's like, people say I'm selfish. People say I'm I'm self involved. Who else would I be involved with? <laughs> She's like RuPaul. How the hell are you gonna love somebody else? I don't know. I'm not here for the new, also mid season new taglines, and then they're lame. Here's what I think. I think Bravo is struggling in this pandemic, and, and so we gotta do what we can they, to we change bells, it up. Bells, whistles. We don't got content. We gotta give you taglines. Like I, I, you know, we're all to be more. You know. I mean, what was what was Sonia's? I forgot. I don't remember. Something I don't even. Hers was wild. Something about there. Century Twenty One. Oh, did you hear her new title for Century Twenty One? Where she says she's I'm the Chief Lifestyle Officer of Century Twenty One. <laughs> <laughs> officer. Chief Lifestyle Officer. Oh my God! There's so much cleavage. On this <laughs> Danielle. And yeah, you've got the best boobs. If I were you, I'd be in a bra right now. Okay. <laughs> I've never seen someone do a podcast in a pink suit. <laughs> um, yeah, who came up with that title? They were bandying about phrases. It's like they put them all in a bowl and they just said, pick three and we'll pop them together. I and they came someone... up with chief lifestyle officer. It's like, did you ever used to watch, I forget what that... I forget there was a show where like it was like Willy Wonka like you're just like here's a child give them an office like it was just like it's not a real office it's not a real thing they made it up to ha- so she could just the, the same way that she's like a brand ambassador or whatever the fuck you know yeah, what I mean so be like instead of a CEO or a CFO she's a what CLO chief last chief last CLO <laughs> Guys, where did Jill Zarin scamper off to? Jill. I thought she was supposed to be at the party. I had thought about Jill. I kept looking for her. She was at the party. I saw her here and there. She was dressed in. Yeah. She did? And they didn't even bother to show her? I Jill Zarin, you guys. Danielle, you look like you're hating Jill Zarin. No, it was. I felt bad. Here's the deal. Even though she started us off on this show, she's an OG of the NYC. And she'll always have our respect for that. Amen. She's no longer of this show. She no longer fits the brand. <laughs> Again, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying she felt out of place. And for her to feel out of place in the thing that she started. Yeah. Is the circle like, will not hold. No. Mm-mm. Well, mm. I mean, we don't know. We don't know what's going on with her life. There could be drama. She doesn't hang out with any of them, though, except for Luann, right? And she's desperate to get back on the show. Desperate. And I will say, I didn't feel the desperation as thick when she came in this time. I felt she was a bit breezier, lighter, dating a younger guy. I did feel there was a lightness to her, which I'm happy for post in a post Bobby world. I just felt. <laughs> I just felt. Oh, she PBW. <laughs> <laughs> a lot you know obviously r.i.p just the p p b w <laughs> obviously all right all right all right p um but it was i just felt like she's no longer of us i hear that i hear that but there might be a uh, there might be a, 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 a way for her to regain entry but i don't, I don't believe know. so i don't believe yeah. so I wish she just wouldn't come. If you're going to come in and you haven't been on for a while and you're Jill Zarin, you started off in your OG, you can't come in in a dumpy jumpsuit like that. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, you need to come in wearing an evening gown. Come in. Re-enter. Right. Like Dorit style. Don't bring us a a sanitation uniform. (laughs) (laughs) And then sit down for hair and makeup. I want to see the after. Thank you. Because You're, no, no, thank yeah. you. <laughs> you know what? She shouldn't come on because what's even worse than her absence is at least I could think in her absence, like, oh, if she were back, things would be crackling. But then to see her and then not see her yeah, within right. seeing her is so She's just tough. been edited out, you know, flawlessly. Yeah. Now, can we talk about, speaking of testimonials, Dorinda's testimonial 
world. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know, Dorinda's gotten a stylist like three years ago. This is Dorinda pre-stylist. There's no one over there helping her out. So yeah. she's got her like fuzzy purple vests. It looked like, you know, that's her old world exploded with color. She just loves rainbow, color. rainbow chairs, rainbow, out, like just a the thing behind her. It looked like she was in a, she looked like she was in Jill Zarin's store. Yes, yes. Yes. Zarin fabrics exploded. Thanks. Yes. I, I, this is a little bit of a tangent, but I mean, Dorinda's just, she's always just off. Everything's just a, a little bit n not, I mean, in the, in the burger shop, the hair that was like, I don't even know what was, I don't even know. What, and her daughter didn't say anything to her. Like, <laughs> mom, smooth, like, what if, if Paloma, if my daughter did that to me, I'll tell you right now, she's out the will. <laughs> Yeah, well. that scene in Jumbo's Burger Shop. <laughs> you know, I I we have learned this year how much Dorinda likes a cheeseburger. <laughs> And and I do too. So I just I do love that about her. She's like cheeseburger for breakfast, cheeseburger jumbos, cheeseburger. She's cheeseburger. Like, how many times did you say this guy knows me? He knows what I like. This guy knows you know, me. He knows, you know I I like everything. I like. He had man. never like seen her before, <laughs> ever. Now I will say I did feel we've seen some real growth with Hannah. Yes, she's gorgeous. Gorgeous. She is stunning, and That's she awesome. felt less of sort of like a spoiled brat than we've seen her seem in the past. She felt like I, we've seen her grow a little bit. I felt yeah. proud of her. And build her mom up. I thought she was really like a nice presence. It was a shock to see her build her mom up at the time where I feel her mom is at her lowest in terms of <laughs> respectability. Wait till she sees this season. I know. I'm just like... And I do think there's so much good in Dorinda, and we've seen it in the past, but she is in a spiral this season. So She's so angry all the time. See, I feel like I'm like that, too. That's why, that's why, yeah, no. No, I see myself in Dorinda. She is who I see myself in. Yeah. Just so fucking angry. So angry. Like, she just wants to fight all the time with mm -hmm. whoever. I, I got in a fight, like, three days ago on a hike. With oh. who? This woman who wasn't wearing her mask. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Green like a fucking lunatic. Like uh, like all my rage just poured onto this crazy lady on the hiking trail. And I was with my children. Not my finest moment. You know what? There's no better time. Let was, see. That was me today in an Albertsons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've called managers. I've I am like on the fucking hunt. Oh yeah, I went I, in a in a yogurt land. I really lost my shit. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> I love that you're like, oh, please wear a mask, but here I am at a dirty buffet of toppings. <laughs> no, you have to sit outside. They don't let you get the toppings yourself. <laughs> okay, I'm glad to hear that. Please, I'm uh, What did the down. woman say, Anna? What did you say and what did she say? Well, I was walking with my kids and she's coming up. And, you know, there was nobody else on the hike, so our, we had our mask down around yeah. too. But then you can see people coming yeah. from a ways away. You pop so them I, up. Right, so I, we, I go, everybody put your mask up. So we put our mask up. She didn't with her, and she was with two other people. I don't know. And then they didn't. And Paloma said, well, mommy, she didn't put her mask on. I go, well, clearly she doesn't give a shit about anyone but herself. <laughs> In earshot, she heard this? this. Yeah, oh, yes. Uh, so I just whipped around at her, and I was like, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Blah, blah, blah. She was like, fuck you. And I was like, fuck you. And I was like, I'm not asking you to wear a fucking hazmat suit. Be a fucking decent human being, you stupid bitch. And I called her a decent human being. Yes! <laughs> Yes, I she, I love I this. And I go, I don't give a fuck. You think I give a? And how do I know you just got tested, bitch? You could be lying. I don't give, a, and I don't care. I don't care. You could. Those tests it. last one minute. Exactly. I was like, you could have gotten it five minutes ago. Your bullshit ass ain't wearing a mask. So how do I know? Wow. Screaming at her. What did her friends do? They were just like to her, calm down, just calm down, calm down. Yeah. They didn't have her back at all. None of yeah. them. Came. Well, they were probably mask. like, put your fucking mask on. They all, they were a bunch of idiots. So whatever. Hey, hey. You know what? Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> I love when a situation does warrant yelling and I can really get out like a lot of other rage too. 100%. But then sometimes I'll go so far, but I love that story and I love it. <laughs> even was cussing her in Spanish. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> I was like, you fucking stupid abogosa, desgraciada, coño. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God.
God, I love this. This is oh, wonderful. God wonderful. God um, was there one more thing? Go ahead, D. I was also gonna say, um, I was gonna say, what is Luann wearing through in the walkthrough? Remember when she comes in to do like a walkthrough of the oh party? My God. <laughs> And she's in like a sparkle sailor hat and like like a cap and like a like I thought that was the costume, but that was just her way of getting that was ready. The no, I no. thought that was the costume. That was And then when she's getting ready, people are at her party and she goes, she's in a robe and she goes, Oh, I just need to change into something more comfortable. <laughs> like people are at your party. Okay, I wanna talk briefly, if I may, about Leah and Rob. Yes. Ooh. I think Leah is deeply still in love with Rob. Oh, for sure. And she's always like, you guys aren't going to know what to do with yourselves when I get someone. And he's kind of like, yeah, no, we'll be okay with that. And she's like, "Uh uh-uh, you're going to be jealous, right? And I do find Rob to be cute, a great guy. You know, we heard Leah, of course, say he had a big dick and, Mm -hmm. you know. A lot of donkey dicks on the Housewives is that the I do get that vibe from Rob, though. I do get that vibe. Because he's so understated. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, and little guys like that who are super confident, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. reason, it ain't their height. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, I love you, little. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, I want to say something, but it's so upsetting. I don't know if I can oh, say God. this to you guys. No, okay, we might have to cut this. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Little guys, big dicks. I was going to say my brother is shorter and very confident. Okay, I think that might be the case. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Look. I I'm don't buy it with my little eye. I just think it. I'm going to say something disgusting, and we might have to go this. <laughs> go ahead. I once accidentally, as an adult, walked into my dad's bathroom. <laughs> I think my dad might be rolling down. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Good for you, my brother and your dad. Anna, anyone in your immediate family has a donkey tick? Oh, the bitches. Yeah, <laughs> but that feels more right to share. Now, Danielle, what did you feel when you saw that? Proud? <laughs> Hats off? I felt shocked. It was, I was in a hotel. My, my parents and I were traveling together in different hotel rooms, and my father didn't know I had gotten gone into their hotel room so he's sort of like so he was in the bathroom and i was like ah i screamed but and i but then was that the first thought that popped in just remember being <laughs> i do remember being like Whoa. <laughs> i assume it wasn't direct no <laughs> <laughs> also my dad listens to this podcast hi dad <laughs> I've met your father. B D E. He's very confident. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now when Sonia met Rob, it really made me laugh. Uh Leah's like, Sonia, meet my ex Rob. Meet my ex Rob. And Sonia simply says to him, Fix my hair. <laughs> no. Fix well, my hair. I think Rob said it succinctly and beautifully at the end of the episode where he just goes. I don't know how I got here, but here I am. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a fucking tagline. It's it's so perfect for not only them, for us. For I us. don't know how I got here, but here I am. He's so <laughs> deeply disturbed and embarrassed for Leah. But I felt there was like pain behind it too, because it's like she's the mom of his daughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Leah on Instagram this week came out and said she's like, I think something like 40 or 50 days sober. Good for oh. her. Good, Good for, her. for her. I really yeah. want her sober and there. Happy. I really, I really have a soft spot for Leah, and I, I like what she's bringing, just a little fresh engine, a little fresh. How fierce does she look in that bodysuit? Wow. Mercy. Wow. Gorgeous. La, 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 That's her boxing, you know? She's a boxer. Oh, yes. Yeah. Not um, by trade. Yeah, not by trade. <laughs> but that's her workout choice. Yeah. Can we talk about the editors for a second? When Sonia was talking and going on a rant, and she literally at one point goes, 
what did she say? She goes like, what about, she doesn't feel my pain. She doesn't feel my struggle. And then she said, you're not inclusive. And the editors wrote, you, 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 I, V, whatever, you, you, you. I like just to like they could have just written the word inclusive and put all those uh-huh. u's in the in the they also um, showed her eating that soup like a like a like a like a prisoner like like i don't even know what she was like, like, an like a daily stuck in in, in in her face it was food it was it was so disgusting. Her chomping on that chicken bone. I mean, they and are when not- Leah pulled that lobster leg out, oh. <laughs> and, and her husband's like, "Put it down, Leah. Put it down." <laughs> it's a clam. That big dick thing. Yeah. <laughs> was it her husband's? <laughs> it was your dad's. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, if you're good to move on, really quick, we just want to quickly touch down. On, uh, on the upcoming Potomac and just some some taglines and I think what we're preparing ourselves for. I'm so here for because new taglines came out. Uh, before you know, we've seen the trailer, which I'll just give a couple lines of the trailer, which is that Ashley shares with us beautifully. I have a tear in my anus, <laughs> and then and then we see a lot of marriages are on the rocks, and I really. Candace with the butter knife says, quote, I am black girl magic personified. I can read a book and I can read you down. I liked it. I, I, like, I, know, you know, I, I liked that it. Too. I liked it. Now, then we find out that Michael, we've had some issues with him. In the past. Many, issues. <laughs> many issues that there's a news report that says he goes into a hotel room with several, several strippers. And then we see a scene with him and Ashley where he says we did go home together. So I actually think we're going to see. Strippers. You know, that was unclear. No, female. Because I remember when that yeah. those articles came out and there was a lot of conversation on the blogs and stuff that it was, he did it on purpose to shy away from the rumors from last season about him, you know, kind of like sexually harassing men and stuff like that. So That's like, nice. Well, He's like, I'm going to cheat on her with women just to show everybody I'm not gay. It seemed to me like that, that was like the word on the street. I don't know. Like, again, I don't know. I'm not there. But that seemed to be what I was hearing from the people. And then Monique is going to go off the rails. Monique, I'm Monique. so here for Monique going off the rails. Monique's no longer pregnant because she wanted to like fight a couple times last year, but then she was like, I'm thinking of my baby. I'm thinking of my baby, but now the baby's out and Monique is ready. But I'm, she is going to get ratchet. Yes. I'm here for it. I feel for Monique because I do think she is a woman who married into a life that now she is thinking like, like, I think she basically, you know, made a deal in her life and in her marriage. Um, so maybe not spoken, which is like, I'm going to take care of the kids. I'm going to be the homemaker and you be the football star. And that's what our relationship is. And I don't think that's what she wants. And I think that's where so much of her anger is coming from. And she says it basically to her husband, like, which is, I need help. And he's like, yeah, well, I pay for that. So good luck. And to be told that, especially when you have three little, little ones, like I think her anger is coming from a place of like, you know, like just overwrought. and Yes. And also Candace could drive anyone to do anything. For sure. We didn't see, uh, we didn't see Candace's husband on the um, previews, did we? Once I feel like when she was like. One time. I like Candace just because she always. She's always starting some bullshit shit. And I like to see her fight with her mother, her crazy ass mother. <laughs> her mother is the reason for the season. Like you can draw a direct line from Candace's behavior to her mother. Like the way that her mother treats her is shocking. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So mean. And, <laughs> and you can see in the rest of her life, she's a totally reasonable, intelligent, successful woman yeah. and then her daughter and her she becomes something totally different she's so jealous of her daughter it's sickening i can't, I right. can't take it but I, I i like watching it <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i love her on the show do not get me wrong when i say she's how did her, ashley get a, a tear in her what'd you say her anus i think uh-huh. from pushing from the birth yeah I think from the birth how, how are you guys uh, is- Anuses. <laughs> intact intact 
Um, yeah, perfectly perfect. <laughs> intact. Maybe I'll just read a couple of these taglines and then we, and then we can we can wrap up. But yeah. I'm you know some of these taglines I'm loving. Giselle Bryant. I'm still the baddest thing walking and the most anointed one talking. Yes, yes, yes. I love her so much. I love her so much. Robin Dixon. I live in a house full of ballers, but I never get played. Boo. Just as tired as Robin is. <laughs> yeah. And that this one is the worst. New mom Ashley Darby says, now that I have my baby, that's the only crap I take. Ugh. What? It's so bad, and it makes it, it doesn't even make sense. Taking a crap, not the bit ba- like you, it's it doesn't make sense. But it's oh, that's not true. your husband's stepping out on you with a bunch of dudes, <laughs> and that's right. Candace, Candace says reading is fundamental, and honey, I own the library. I love that. I like that one. one. I love yeah, that one. I, again, I think that's great. I like that one. And then Karen Huger, La Dom says, honey, the grand Dom doesn't repeat history. She makes it. Oh, yes. I love Karen Huger is a fan. Live and die for the Dom. La Dom. And La Dom's short blonde wig that we're going to see. Beautiful. Beautiful. Speaking of Judith Light. (laughs) Judith is the queen of a good blonde wig, yo. I Wonderful. bet. I bet. <laughs> Anna, we got in, we unpacked so much. I have to tell you guys, first of all, thank you so very much for your incredible podcast and for um, including me on it. I can't even tell you. Every time I am lucky enough to do press, like I've been doing Zoom press, whatever it is, for Love Victor, I can't even tell you, not one single time has gone by where they haven't said, we love you on Bitch Sesh. We just love Aww. you on Bitch So you guys are just killing it and making people happy. And I'm just so glad I'm y'all's friend and I get to do this and play with y'all every once in a while. I had to tell you that because... Aww. No, that's so nice. You're a you're just a joy to have on here. And I know it sounds like when people say someone's a joy, but you really are. You're a bright light and Humpty Dumpty body will stay with me until... <laughs> I pass. And can you tell everyone um, when is Love Victor on? Uh, yes, Blood and Man? where we can find it. It's streaming on Hulu. Check it out. It's a really sweet show. And, um, you know, we're, we're really proud of it. And uh, and it's good for the family. Like, any, everybody can watch it. So, uh, you know, get into it. Get into it. I love that. We love Thank you. Thank you, Anna Ortiz. Love You're you the best. Love you. Thank you. 